So when you uh, work with silk, you have to stretch it fairly tight for the dye to be distributed on the silk evenly, to, for the gutta or this resist to be distributed evenly. Um, so we create these stretches, these frames, where we stretch the silk. The silk stretched with this rubber band. Sometimes people use the, the um, uh, scotch tapes, um, all kinds of devices, all kinds of systems. But I, I like this one, it's faster. So I design, I sketch the design, the full size. I don't do small sketches and then transfer to the big one. I do the full size right away. And then I align it with a permanent marker because we work on a wet silk. We work while silk is wet. The technique called a Surti technique, it's a French technique. Um, we work on, work on isolated areas, wet on wet, while silk is wet. So it's quite thin. That's why I can see the design quite well. For the heavy shimus, it's hard to see the design. That's why another reason why I have to outline it in dark uh, ink, so I can see actually through the silk. I don't draw on the silk per se. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm trying not to touch silk um, as, as much as possible because any oil on your hands will re reflect on how dye is actually absorbed by this by the silk uh, fibers. You being artists, you probably understand that paint consists of pigment and filler that binds the pigment with the, with the surface. Um, same with the silk paints. It's a pigment with some kind of glue substance that binds, binds, binds the pigment to the surface of the, of the fibers. So what you're seeing right now is the kind of first steps of the working on silk. Um, on the bottom, you see the design on top stretch silk and we already outline most of the design with this resist. It's a kind of rubbery substance that prevents dye spreading across the silk. Um, Surti technique called the Surti because it's, uh, it's, it works on isolated areas. We isolate areas of the silk where I want one color to be and prevent it from blending with other colors. So let's say, I want, this is like, we call it curly heads. I decided to call it curly heads. It's broccoli, basically design of broccoli. I come up last night with it last night to, to show you guys an, as an example. So let's say I want this broccoli to be green, but background, I want it to be blue, but I want to, the edge of the broccoli be sharp. I don't want them to be blending blue and greens together because there's, if I touch, and you will see how it's happened, if I touch the brush to the silk, the liquid dye, this ink, will just spread freely. So um, we put it in these little bottles like that with a very tiny little nozzle. And it's kind of thickish. And this that's what we're gonna do. Are before you put the dye on it? Yes, that's what we do. Uh, before we start putting any dye, we have to outline the lines of the design to make sure that the dye does not go where I don't want it to go, or it doesn't blend where I don't want it to blend. But it has to dry. Before it dries, it doesn't. It's not gonna work because it will just simply dissolve with. At the, in the process of painting. So we'll put it aside. All right, here we have our resist lines. In most cases, everywhere where we applied them earlier, they already dried up. The last application that we did in front of your eyes, still a little bit wet, we won't touch it yet. Uh, but we can paint everywhere else. So 
I mix my own colors that I use and uh, put them in jars like that. Um, in jars like that. Um, the, the dyes are very economical. They're very, very concentrated. Um, I use Jacquard red labels, red label professional dyes. Um, they come out dark, very vibrant, dark colors. Um, Jacquard produces about 13 colors. I mixed my own hundreds of colors. Um, I mix them with a dropper so I know exact recipe. And I create this recipe, I mix them and hold it in a jar. Um, so in order for us to dye something, we have to, uh, we can use and work on the dry silk, but then um, dye does not spread uh, that evenly. The best solution is, and the technique requires for you to wet the area where you apply the dye. Uh, as a solution, we use uh, uh, distilled water and alcohol. Because of this particular setting, um, the silk is quite close to the paper. So what I do, I lift it a little bit, silk over the paper so they don't touch each other. Now let's do this. We will start with, with let's see, this stem of the broccoli. And we'll make it chartreuse color, very bright yellow and, and chartreuse. And we'll work with Lana together from both ends. To wet the area, apply dyes, and you'll see how they spread and how they actually uh, blend together, which is very nice. It's one of my favorite parts. I use separate brush for wetting the silk. This brush never touches the dye. It's kind of, um, it's her job to wet the silk because um, it's hard to take the dye completely out of the brush once you use it. So this this brush never use never saw the dye in her life. Just to, to wet the silk. I'll take my yellow. And I literally just need a little bit. But um, you see that the dye spreads kind of evenly. I don't have to smooth it too much. And at the moment, I didn't do anything to create any gradations. It's just a flat color, but what I want to do, I wanted to, I wanted to create edges of it, slightly different color. I wanted to make it, make them green. So now I have two options with my hand. I can either let the silk take care of blending these two colors, which are already happening here on top, by gravity, it starts floating down and two colors start blending together. Or I can take blending brush, which is also separate brush, and blend them. So what I will do to make it, uh, you make the process a little bit quicker, I'll blend them. So I blend them a little bit, and you see the blends happening very easily, very smoothly. So until this little piece is dried, the, the dyes will still be blending and will still be traveling. And I use this very often. But once it's dry, I cannot touch it any longer. On the edge, make it a little bit darker. Uh, 
and make it more dimensional. On untreated silk, blending is quite easy and natural process. Um, some people when, who don't like the lines of good on their work, and some artists, they, they prefer not to have good lines. Um, they treat silk with uh, agents that stop flow of the dye through the fibers of the silk. Um, they just called stop flow or, or dyna flow, no flow, different agents. In ancient times, Japanese used um, soybean uh, juice, juice of soybeans. Um, they added to the dilute to the water and treated silk with it. It stopped the flow of the dye through the silk fibers. But then blending colors becomes a problem because fibers, because dyes don't flow well and you can see the strokes. And I don't like that. That's why I would rather see lines of the Gouda but have very smooth gradients, very smooth, nice blending gradients. Um, that's just my preference. Um, does it make sense? But it does mean that it cannot be achieved on a treated silk. Some art is just phenomenal. They do very realistic and beautiful work on treated silk, but they spend <laughs> blending quite you know, a while to achieve smooth work because it doesn't flow naturally. Right. So I like this. <clears throat> I often use white of the silk. Um, at this moment, I'm not um, using it for this particular piece. But to create highlights, you use white of the silk. At, at this point, because it's a quite simple work, almost like a coloring book. Very easy. When you work with silk, you kind of lead um, your brush to follow this the spread of the dye instead of painting it. Actually, you kind of let the brush follow the spread of the dye. Though uh, some artists like the more rough textured look uh, for, for um, abstract work or more color, watercolor look, it don't always have to be that blended. I just choose this particular one to be smooth. After you steam the silk, colors will get even more vibrant, more bright. So this um, broccoli will be psychedelic. See, I don't even, um, I, I dip the brush, I'll wipe it off, um, and half of the, half of the, drop of this dye is enough for me to to do all that I need to do. And maybe we'll try uh, magenta on top and see what's happening when colors blend. So if I wanted to layer colors, I will have to let it dry and then rewet it again, even though I just said that I cannot uh, do it because um, as soon as water touches, it will create a spot. But if I want to layer colors and cover it over with new color, I want it to dry it up and then rewet it all together very quickly. Because if I just touch and let the water drop be there, it will create a spot. So. Um, 
I will need to drive the area where I wanted to put uh, magenta. I will put magenta here. And by the time I finish, these two pieces will be done. They will be dry. Mm -hmm. So uh, the one thing that needs to be considered is the supplies. Right. Besides just the, besides the dyes, you need the silk, you, the brushes. You all have because you're all artists, but you will need the stretcher. You need the gutta, and um, I can steam your silk for you. Uh, but eventually, you will need a steamer um, if you if you decide to work for, with the silk. So it's, it's, it's the, the uh, materials. That's a consideration. Other than that, I have no problem teaching group classes or private classes. Mm -hmm. So any dyes that work on animal fibers will will use will be usable for silk mm. because it's still animal fiber. So um, it's silk like uh, similar to human hair. Basically, it's one of the strongest substances. It's stronger than uh, than uh, steel, by the way. So if you take the same uh, trend, same uh, thickness of the steel, the silk is stronger. So it has prismatic structure. Silk fibers has have prismatic structure. That's why they reflect light so nicely, and uh, they, they, that's why silk is so shimmery. <clears throat> So this one is practically dry. All right, so that's the purple one and uh, the magenta one. And now let's try to bring magenta to one of these green ones and see what's happened. It's going to be muddy. Color theory tells us that it's going to be horrible. But we're adventurous. Well, I started uh, the process of silk painting when I was in my first art school, which was 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. Uh, but then I, because I was doing fashion design, I did not have chance to practice silk painting, but I knew theoretically how it's all happening. And we started and we went to the silk painting factory um, back in Russia. Uh, but uh, at some point when we retired from uh, and closed our company, um, we also were professional dancers. So we did kind of retired from everything. Um, I decided, why don't I go and uh, start painting on silk because uh, it's fascinating and I did like it very much. Um, it, the process was fascinating me. Uh, and I tried it and I, I loved it. And I switched to that because I did uh, glass mosaics before and uh, um, veneering and ceramics. So I did different types of media uh, before, but I, when I tried so painting, I kind of felt that mine. It's very much mine, what I want to do. Oh, nice, rich wine color. Look at that. That's what happened. I like that. We'll blend it. I don't know if you can see how dye runs away from the water, but I'm trying to wet it evenly all the way through. But you can't avoid these lines that immediately happening. Here's a line, here's a line, here's a line. It's where water pushes dye away from, from original placements. The jacquard colors really blend very nicely. They, they, the color is very clear. Yes. Which is very nice. Okay. 
here's where I applied, I applied magenta over green. Uh, when it's when they it start blending on its own, the magenta pushes the green away from its original placement. It's a nice wine color. When I try to blend them together, it's becoming uh, more brown, just like a color theory predicts, because they actually blend into gray, green and uh, Red and green is gray. So. My favorite part is when you layer colors and something interesting happens. Something new, new colors blends together. New combinations, how they blend, have whatever happening there is my favorite part. Also, there's um um. I told you that if you touch the water with water, you'll get a spot. But imagine if you purposely decide to touch it many times, you'll get many spots. Let me blend this before it dries. Just a little bit. Just like that. So you'll get many spots. We use it as separate as techniques. Here, I don't know if you can see, and I don't know if it will make any sense to you at all, uh, spots on the silk. Yeah. So they produce with different agents. Uh, and they, we did it on purpose to create uh, uh, textures. So we experimented with the different uh, agents to see how they affect the dye and what's going to happen if we apply them. Like this is a salt effect, very popular. I don't know if you see it on black. Right. And we use it. We use alcohol. We use water. Uh, we use salt. We use all kinds of different agents to create different effects. Um, I don't use it that often because for me it flattens a little bit the the whole um, the whole painting. But but if you if you want to, there are ways to do interesting effects, create textures. I don't know if it's too boring to watch how paint dries, but <laughs> not very fast process. No, it, it's it's great, but we will have to maybe open it up for questions because right. because the staff is, um, you know, the the arts art center staff they they have to go home sometime. <laughs> All right, so let me raise the ends. It's only an hour 45 is all we got, right? Yeah. So we're five minutes short of that. So done deal anyway. All right, I'm ready for your questions, whatever they might be. Well, you've answered a lot of them already. Looking forward to see the finishing piece. Sure. Well, it's going to be very psychedelic. As you can see, colors are very bright, and uh, I choose very contrasting colors with Lana. Um, magenta, green is going to be blue and purple. So there's a whole palette of colors that we chose. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be a surprise for both of us. Huh? You um, have, I see between the magenta and the green, there's a white spot. Will you fill that or will you leave that white? This one? Yes. Okay, so there's a, another broccoli here. There's a head of broccoli and there's a stem that goes like this. Oh, so uh, there. Yes, yeah, so half of this uh, empty spot gonna be occupied by this 
stem, and this broccoli is going to be very green. Um, and half of it is going to be background, and background is going to be purple. Not the cutting cheese. Okay. So half of it's going to be stem of the this head of the broccoli, and half of it is background. And it's going to be I'm planning to have purple background. This broccoli is chartreuse and yellow. This bro broccoli is green and the kind of like um, bluish green type of green. Um, and this one is blue, like a sky blue broccoli. And the purple background. So everything is very contrasting. This is the only magenta broccoli. That's fantastic. The, this is a crazy broccoli, magenta crazy broccoli. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? I already asked mine. <clears throat> I'm going to go out and forage now. Yeah. Rather than kill the animal and cook it, somebody else is going to do it. Okay, so should we say good night? I think we should. Thank you so much, you guys. All right, let me raise it a little bit higher so we can both yeah. stand up. Thanks, George. We'll see you next time, man. All right, I hope it wasn't too boring. <laughs> Oops, he, it was, where we are. It was oh, wonderful. Here. It was wonderful. Oh, it was great. I, I so enjoyed it. I hope Thank it wasn't. Thank you very much. You did a Thank great you. job. Maybe we could do a part two someday. Yeah, really. Okay. Well, if you if you want, <laughs> we can do something at your request. Yeah. Something. We'll see. We'd love that. I'd Thank like to, I'd like to be in there with you doing some stuff.